What's up, lovely adlings? Thank you very much for clicking this video. You are a wonderful soul. Is it your first time here? Well, if it is, let me tell you what we are all about, which is love, peace, forgiveness, and unity as our message to the world. Kindly watch till the end and help us spread this message. Straight out of Africa with good vibes. Lots of good vibes, man. Tell us where you're watching from and leave some comments there. Let's dive in, man. Good vibes till the end. If you choose to color your hair something else, um, it is because you're obviously it's a means of self-expression and you're going to borrow a little bit of the energies of that color, right? Now, very often, right, people who um, choose to color their hair are either subconsciously trying to connect with an elemental kingdom, right? Or an element for that matter, right? Like redheads is fire, obviously. You're trying to connect with hot fire. Depending, some purples are also fire, depending on, on if, if it's a reddish purple, then yes, if it's a bluish purple, um, that's um, not usually fire. Uh, it could be ether that you're trying to connect to. Obviously, blue is water, green is earth, uh, browns is earth, uh, white is air, you're trying to connect to air. Gold is also ether or air. Um, so, but very often, you know, people uh, who color their hair either are going to be uh, missing a particular energy in their life, right? Some of them would be connected to an elemental kingdom. And uh, for, you know, a lot of the people with a lot of mermaid lives, um, fairy lives, elven lives um, would feel that incessant need to want to color their hair. A lot of star seeds color their hair because they have memories of looking um, something, uh, looking differently on another planet. Um, what do you think about that? Special results. You are very powerful. You are very, very powerful. You are so mm, powerful. And you don't know. You just have no idea how powerful you are and do you know why you don't know how powerful you are it is because you don't know who you are okay the moment you know who you truly are you will understand how powerful you are and the power is in your mind your mind is a powerful Tool. It is a powerful machine that can create anything and everything that you want and wish for. But are you ready? Are you willing to be taught by yourself? For you to discover anything within you, it has to be self-taught. Self-taught means it is allowing the power that is in you, which is the Holy Spirit, your helper, to help you eh, discover who you are. My God, my God, my God. You have just been diverted to think that you are less. You are not enough. You are not capable. You have no capacity. But in real sense, you are overqualified. Whether you are educated or you are not educated. Because most of the people, the educated people read about, they usually read about people who never went to school, but they changed the world. So, whether you have gone to school, whether you have not gone to school, it doesn't matter. You are a powerful being. You are a powerful, powerful being. And I might not be the best teacher, but I can always tell you a hundred percent that the Holy Spirit is the best teacher to teach you to discover who you are. So as long as you continue to let your ego and your beliefs 
that you have known for all these years continue to lead you astray your religion you will never never discover who you are you know most of you when you ask who are you oh you know i'm a teacher who are you my friend uh you know i'm a doctor i'm a counselor i am this and that that's not you that's not you that's not you that's not you this mind it is a machine it is a powerful powerful thing just give it some time have a meeting with you and discover who you are you know when i look at the comment section in my videos people really misinterpret everything that i say when i say heaven and hell is a state of mind everybody in my comment section most of the people are there so you think there's no god or you said there's no god i didn't say there's no god because you are the god and the god is in you and until you connect with the god in you you are you are a robot whether you like it or not see you tomorrow 29th on my live at 6 p.m in the evening east african time yes i'll be going live for the very first time and i can't wait to connect with you you are a wonderful soul man a lovely being much love to yourself hit the like button and spread love to those around you and some caring good vibe like this gazelle that had mistaken some lion for its mother oh, and the lion is wondering oh, why has god decided to tempt me this way oh my god with all my fatherly instincts i understand this is a baby but now oh, 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 what do i do let me just spread some good vibes you see good vibes now oh my god oh thank you very much oh. You see these animals, they are always full of love and good vibes, you see? And then prayed with the gazelle just like the mother would have done. And it's just interesting and incredible. These are different breeds playing together. You see, when you imagine about how different they are, and now they are playing together, sharing good vibes, you just uh, be amazed and uh, wonder. And feel nice because of this wonderful creatures that you have here on earth. You see, just like yourself and other humans, please spread love to those around you and caring and good vibe. Just be a good person, man. You see, this animals, this is incredible. You see, this is uh, the prey uh, mistaking the predator. Oh, oh, oh my, my, you see, the person that eats the other mistaking being mistaken to be the mother by the person that they usually eat you see and instead of eating them they send good vibes this is incredible man this is something good no matter how different we are we can always love one another as humans and spread love and good vibes and we can have a wonderful earth man if it's your first time here you are much welcome oh good vibes to you you are loved and respected Watch till the end, hit the like button, leave some comments, and if God has helped you, you can also hit the super thanks. You see, much love. This is incredible, man. You see how these animals live, they should teach us a lot, you see? Like, we should always stay in peace and unity. That is incredible. And uh, the other animal has come, the lioness, it's like it wants to feed on uh, this gazelle. But the father is protecting the gazette because they understand uh, this is good vibes and this is someone's kid. You see, we should stay with them in peace. Oh, good vibes, man. To all even the parents out there and the people with the pets. Much love. They tell me so, man. It's loving and caring and all that. Yo, so that you can have some good life and good humans after us. Oh. And this is how can open us used to be open from the past. Ha! Oh my god, how did they make uh, this now? You mean they used to seal the whole can with nowhere to to open? Ha! How did they think people could open? Or they relied on people's creativity? Oh my god. Mm. What is it? Mm. 
You mean from the past uh, these uh, metallic objects that store stuff, these cans had no lid or some place you can open? This is incredible. And how did they think people could uh, figure it out? Or maybe back then people are uh, so violent they could just use some something like a drill or something like that and cut it open, you see? Rainbow on it. Legit. Look at it when I zoom in on it. Yeah. You can see a circle. Yeah, we're dead. Aliens are here. Oh. oh my god, two suns. Well, that's really fishy. Extremely fishy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> before even knowing what happens knows what's about to happen skunks have a reputation that precedes them and it's usually not a great smell but why is that smell right there so bad that it literally just throws anything that gets sprayed with it off and it can linger for weeks what causes this skunks use what's called thiols and thiocetates and they mix them together in their glands both of these chemical compounds are very rich in sulfur, the thing that makes eggs smell terrible. And the literal atoms of these chemical compounds bond very easily with other substances. So when the skunk itself sprays, the spray itself on a molecular level gets into whatever it touches and just grabs on. And it takes a while to get off. Not good. Oh my gosh, Phoenix, seriously? Oh, and the dogs are home. Okay, oh. okay, thanks. Holy cow. Yeah, he just took his arm and arm and arm and it faster than me. Y'all are constantly asking me, what do angels look like? It's actually a really hard question for me to answer because there are so many different kinds of angels and they're all so different looking. But today I'm going to give it a shot because one of my guard angels has said she will stand with me and let me describe her. My name is Dakota Lee. I have a gift to see in the spirit. I'm a professional animal communicator and God's been letting me visit heaven since I was 12 years old. I'm also uh, on fire for Jesus Christian and this angel that I'm speaking to, I have tested asking, did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? So you can rest assured that I'm speaking to an angel and not anything else. She's literally standing right next to me. And um, I say she, she's feminine presenting. Angels don't have gender the same way that people do. And so there are definitely angels that just have a very androgynous look. But this angel, she's feminine. She's got hair that's um, halfway back, actually fairly similar to mine today, although her hair's not as long as mine. And her hair is this golden brown color. She has a very simple, like a tunic on and a, a belt that has a little bit like a... Oh, okay. It's actually a, a belt that has some gold laced into it and woven into it. And it looks like a rope, but it's very special. She's telling me that it's important that I say that her 
role, as beautiful as she is, she is not here to be the beautiful one and take the glory because she really here is here to protect me as she is one of my guard angels. There are reasons that they look a certain way. And she is a very simple, okay, she says simple is the right word, simple look. Right now her wings, oh wow, she just uh, spread them out for just a moment. Right now her wings are, well, <laughs> they're out now and they're very big. I don't know if any of you guys can can see in the spirit, but um, she just brushed them behind uh, my head or at least her right wing behind my head. Each wing is longer than she is tall. So each wing is like six feet. Let's see. Her skin tone is just a golden skin tone. Everything is sort of laced, laced with gold. <laughs> and she's giving a little wave to you. <laughs> she's giving a little wave to you. She's bringing her wings back because angels have this ability they can sort of like hide their wings and uh, when they're not needed or if there's a reason that they need to appear more human and angels can appear very human especially at first glance some more so than others if she needed or wanted to I guess needed to would be the better word she could definitely I think you could pass for a person <laughs> but that's not her goal and the reason she is part of my guard is because she blocks me from negativity. I think all of us could really use that, but with her role in particular, because I'm really out and spreading this message and just setting it on social media and anyone can really find it, that could bring in a lot of negativity. And so, thank you. You must be busy quite a bit. She says it's not so bad right now. <laughs> but blocking me from the, the negative things that come because so that I, I can remain happy and healthy and, uh, and I thank her but I'm really thanking God because he knows what I need she has a name of course she doesn't want necessarily want me to share it but it's two syllables and it means something like um like accounted peace like calculated peace so that is a description of one of my angels oh that is interesting some people are very lucky! That is really scared. Where I come from? A virus been seeing that. You see? This is what it looks like 100% of the time when you open this. This movie right here is Jurassic Park, for instance. Okay, I'm just showing this to people who have never seen this. For the last 15 years that I have been using Sony Vegas and other editing software, and have gone through downloading movies and using them in our own video production. 100% of the time, it's either an MKV or an MP4. Occasionally, you'll download a torrent that's an AVI, not very often. And this is what it will always look like. One video file right here, one audio file right here, always. That's been my experience. Now, let me show you what happened when we downloaded and put uh, Sony, put the uh, movie Leave the World Behind onto Sony Vegas. Here you go. Stunning. Stunning. One video file, four audio files opened up. And this one, this fourth audio file, seems to be the weapon. This is a low, uh, ELF, uh, low, low frequency... Uh, infrasonic. Infrasonic wave right here. And um, so we, we are going to... Let me put the camera back on again. So this is big news, just just so people realize. In in 15 years of video editing, I have never downloaded, and I'm speaking specifically a movie file, okay? A Hollywood movie from a torrent, downloading it in a, either MKV, MP4, occasionally AVI. 100% of the time, over a thousand movies I've done this with, you have video file, audio file, period. 
This is the very first time I've ever seen anything like this with the four files. Bonnie's gonna go into now talking about the, the infrasonic sound waves and what we found out about that and the fact that there's one here. We're, and the point is we're going to go back after Bonnie gives you some information about what, what it is we're dealing with, how this is a weapon. Then we're gonna go back uh, towards the end of the live stream here and I'm gonna hit specific places where this weapon was used against anybody who watches it, okay? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get your tabs up there. Oh, what do people have fun? What do you think about the there are Three types of souls. Some of us are earth-based souls. People mistake sometimes and think I'm saying earthbound. Is that number one, that, earth, earth based? That probably what's most common, yeah, in that sense of okay. being, being number one. So an earth-based soul is a soul that was designed to incarnate and evolve in body on earth, usually hundreds if not a thousand or more lives on earth, growing and evolving, tripping and falling in human life. That's an earth based soul. That's one. That's one. What's the second? Second one is an interplanetary soul. People can exchange that term. It could be starseed means the same, ET means the same. That's a soul that evolves somewhere other than earth, evolves in an advanced cu culture somewhere in the universe, star system, planet, and that's a soul that comes to earth to aid humanity because they come from an evolved culture. So the term I was given through regression is interplanetary soul. The only reason those souls come into body on earth is because they come from an evolved perspective. They come, they come to help us here. Okay, that's number two. That's number two. Uh, number three, there are only three. Um, number three is an angelic soul. An angelic soul comes from the angelic realm. That realm of soul supports the divine. Call it the source, call it great spirit. People can use their term. The angelic, I like to call it a cadre of souls. Um, angelic souls carry the energy of the high frequency we think of as source. That's basically a love and compassion energy. So their signature energy, their reason for coming to earth is to aid a more acceptance, a greater peace, love, compassion perspective. And what is important of the three? Is there one more important than the other? Absolutely not. They, they are equally important. Um, their role on earth can be somewhat different, but they're not better than each other. They're not more evolved than each other. Um, the, the, the value of understanding, am I earth-based? Am I interplanetary? Am I angelic? Is to understand ourself. So why do I feel so different? Why do I have these unique qualities? Oh my God! Ah, what is losing that? Pay is attention crazy. to these flies monitoring Perfect spirits. Of a monitoring spirit. Winter time, freezing, and here you are, little buddy. No food, no nothing. Being nosy. Mm-hmm. I know. This is what you do. <laughs> you unalive them all. If you're a little extra, you can definitely do a return to sender. Mm -hmm. Drop it in there, put it in the glass, put the top on it. From here, they can't do nothing to you. Definitely, I recommend a return to sender. Mm -hmm. If you're more religious, um, definitely say some prayers, mm -hmm. send back that energy back tenfold. Some may say this is extreme, but if you guys knew the amount of damage this one monitoring spirit. You see, from this side of the world, you get to see a lot of this. I think one of the most insane things that I've ever learned is that if there are aliens out there living in the universe, from their perspective, Earth probably hasn't even formed yet. We humans have been sending out radio signals since 1974, letting the universe know that, hey, we're here. And they've traveled about 200 light years into the galaxy, which is only about this far. 
If there are aliens out there and they're looking for friends, do you know what they would see? If they're living 80 light years away from us, World War II is still happening. If they're living 65 million light years away from us, dinosaurs are still walking the planet. And if those aliens are living 4.6 billion light years away, the solar system hasn't even formed yet. Now, 4.6 billion light years is obviously an insane distance, but the universe itself is 93 billion light years across, which means that if there is intelligent life somewhere out there in the universe, for 95% of the places that they could be, Earth hasn't even formed yet. Good people, you are fun. Do you believe that? Please leave some so comments. The crazy thing is, is that two weeks ago, I celebrated my five-year anniversary of being clean and sober. And while I was at my celebration, at the meeting, I was sharing about how my daughters still weren't in my life. And I hadn't seen them since they were two years old. Um, and so I cried about it and, you know, talked about it and shared about it at the meeting and people were saying like, you know, just, um, you know, maybe just stop worrying about it so much. Just like God give his time and, and, you know, let it be his will. And so I did, I went home that night and, um, I got in a shower and I just said, look, God, I was like, you know what? I've been crying over this and praying for this for so long at this point. I'm just like, if you do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't, I have faith one day that you will though. So I'm going to stop worrying about it and stop harping on it and just let it happen um, in your time. Not four days later, a woman who I haven't talked to in 16 years, my ex called me up and said, you need to come get her. I can't handle her. I said, what? Who, what the, who is this? She said, it's Sarah. You need to come get your daughter. I was like, okay, where? Where do I pick her up? So I drove two and a half hours to Baltimore to go pick up my daughter. Um, and now she's living with me. And... Um, and my wife and my other kids and everybody's getting along well and if that's not a sign that God really like God really does show off man and it's like sometimes if we worry about things too much the worry is us telling God that we don't trust him but when we put it just strictly and solely in his hands that's when the grace really falls through and it comes oh not falls through but comes through and shows itself and if that's not proof that God exists I'm sorry Oh, wonderful people of earth. Thank you for watching up to this far, man. You are loved and respected. You see, sometimes I wonder at the diversity of humanity, you see, because sometimes people argue about a lot of stuff, whether the earth is flat or circular and all that, and some people dispute over color, which is the most unique or strong color, you see, and it's just uh, mind-boggling about all that. But one thing I know for sure is that God exists and there is God beyond us, you see? Because after all, where do you think we came from? Or do you believe in the evolution theory about monkeys and all that? No, please share your thoughts. Because if you believe in that, then I might be faster and uh, having information. I'm almost similar to them, but they are all good vibes people, you see? We share some DNA with those stuff. We are all here to send love and good vibes. After all, we should love one another and all that is here, you see? Because if God doesn't exist, where would we have come from, you see? You, me, we are different, but we still exist as humans. That's why we should love one another, you see? Like, I really love you for clicking and watching up to this far. You are a wonderful soul. Leave some comment, hit the like button, the super thanks button, you see? No names of battle. And um, watch till the end. Because you are loved and respected. Good vibes, man. Good vibes is what we are all about. Let's continue watching. Leave some comments. No. I was taught that the sun is 93 million miles away. How about you? What were you taught? My guess is the same. Were you taught how we know it? Well, possibly your answer would be trigonometry. A hero of ball earth believers everywhere states this is the way that we know. You can verify the distance of the sun. Correct. Based off what? Based off what? Trigonometry. Data. So using trigonometry, we can then figure out the distance to the sun. But the sun and the moon appear to be the same size in the sky. So if we use trigonometry, then I guess the moon is also 93 million miles away. Is that what you were taught? Me neither. So I'm confused. I thought that math could be used to give us these facts. Does math tell us what reality is? Because the same religious zealot hero has also repeatedly cried 
Math is reality. Were you taught this? Well, if it is reality, then the sun is 93 million miles and can't be, say, I don't know, 229 million miles. Both can't be true, right? Both are certainly not reality. So obviously, if math is reality, then math must be able to tell us which is right, 93 million or 229 million. Well, then it's time to prove our reality. Let's see what the math says. Well, let's begin with some facts. What do we know about the sun? Well, it emits light. What else? Well, the rest is a lot like the idea of Santa delivering gifts to every child on Christmas Eve. Even little children think it sounds crazy, but because authority figures are the ones telling them the story and they don't know any better, and, well, cookies are eaten in the morning, it becomes believable to most children. So much the same, the ideas of the distance to the sun come with the same nuggets. You and I might not know any better, so we look to the authorities for the truth. So we are told that it's 93 million miles, and with that comes some eaten cookies in the morning. They have filled our knowledge gap with their own cleverly constructed explanations of what we see, and then all we can see is what looks like beautifully wrapped presents, and then we find some cookie crumbs as evidence of their fictional Santa Claus. One way they do this is with the idea of angular size. So, back to our facts. The sun emits light. Anything else that we know about the sun? Sure, we know its angular size or its apparent diameter. This is the apparent size or angular diameter of a sky item. How large something appears in our eye or telescope. The sun and moon both appear to be about 31 or 32 arc minutes or that's equal to one half degree. So I want to point out something that I certainly wasn't taught in school, and it's no wonder why. Scaling invariance. Feel free to look it up on Wikipedia, and you'll see that in physics, mathematics, statistics, and economics, scale invariance is a feature of objects or laws that do not change if scales of length, energy, or other variables are multiplied by a common factor. As long as all of your inputs are scaled correctly, the entire body is indifferent it doesn't vary. One of those things, the entire solar system model. But wait, the mathematics of the solar system is facts. Indisputable fact, right? Well, not when the entire models are based off of angular size, because angular size tells us what size something is in our eye, not its true distance or its true size. We need more info. So hold up here. I thought... Math is reality. It has to be. 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's reality. 30 plus 15 equals 45. Period. Well, is that true? A man has 30 cars, and he added 15 cars. He now has 45 cars. Is this true? Well, if there was such a man, and he did add said cars to his 30-car collection, then the statement is true. Is it reality? Well, I'd have to first prove said man exists, as do his 30 cars, as do the 15 he added. That makes it reality. So is math reality? Well, only when all elements of the equation are proven true is math reality. Is 30 plus 15 45? Yes, true. Or is it? What if it was 30 plus 15 half cars? Oh, that's different. We need to prove and know what each number refers to. If I have $3 million and I add $1 million, does that mean I have $4 million? Well, if I had $3 million in reality and added $1 million in reality, then I'd have $4 million. But to claim it is reality, I must first prove that I have what I claim. So if the entire model of the solar system is based off of angular size, who is proven the actual distance and sizes of said items? Is the solar system reality or is it a cartoon? Hmm. I mean, is the solar system a fact, or is it fiction? This clearly has to be solved already, correct? What if I told you it wasn't? What if it was all just numbers? What if it was all just math, and they wanted you to believe that math was reality, but they forgot about the other part? They have to prove all the elements of the math. Let me explain. So, the angular size of the sun and moon is approximately 31 or 32 arc minutes, which equals 0 0.53 degrees. Now, that does work for a sun 93 million miles away and 864,337 miles wide. But it also works for a sun 229 million miles away and 2 million miles wide. Wait, what are you saying? The sun would look way bigger in the sky. No, it wouldn't. It would look the same as if it was 93 million 
or if it was 46,701,000 miles away and 432,000 miles wide. The distances and sizes can be scaled indifferently. Our observations from Earth would be identical. If the sun was 23,351,000 miles away and 216,000 miles wide, it would be the same as if it were 11,675,000 miles away and 108,000 miles wide, identical to the sun that's 6,053,900 miles distant and 56,000 miles in diameter, which is no different than a sun 3,026,900 miles away and 28,000 miles wide, which is just the same as a sun 1.5 million miles away and 14,000 miles wide. Okay, hold up. What about our orbit, our orbit around the sun? Well, sure. You know the distance, which is the radius of our orbit. 2 pi r gives us 9,504,780 miles as our yearly orbit. Divide that by 365 and that by 24, and you get 1,085 miles per hour as our new speed instead of 66,000 miles per hour. And our observations change none. And since you feel no spin or travel at all, well, then nothing changes at all. Man, math is so reality. Whether the sun is 756,730 miles away and 7,000 miles wide, or even, heaven forbid, 3,500 miles away and 32 miles in diameter. It makes no difference. You liar. What about eclipses? Well, as I said earlier, we can't just change the sun. We have to scale the moon, too. So yes, as long as you divide or multiply by the same number, you'll be fine. So yes, the moon is 0.53 degrees as well which works out to being 233,400 miles away and 2,159 miles in diameter, as it is about 400 times as small and 400 times as close as the sun. But it would work the same if the sun was 100 times as big and 100 times as far, so that the moon was actually 58,376 miles away and 540 miles wide. Well, then an eclipse would happen because the sun is 100 times as far so 6,053,900 miles away and 56,000 miles wide. Or the moon could be 14,594 miles away and 135 miles wide. Or 864 miles away and 8 miles wide. Or even, heaven forbid, 3,567 miles away and 33 miles wide. It could be half that size, 1,729 miles away and 16 miles wide, and then the sun could be double at 3,567 miles and 32 miles wide. Same observation from Earth, of course, because math is reality. Now, some things could help us determine which distance was more likely to be correct. For example, the inverse square law of light. Oh my god! What is that out of mathematics? Tartaria. I think this is where all of our fairy tales come from. But they were true stories, and they were dressed up like fables to make us think those things didn't exist, but some of them still do exist. Leprechauns, giants, fairies. How can you know what's real just because you haven't seen it? I'm coming to believe that if we have the concept for it, it existed. What do you think? Um, what do you think? You say that? Every couple of months, an image like this goes viral where somebody asks, visualize an apple in your head and tell me which of these is closest to what you see. And it always goes viral because the answers are wildly different. You will have people who insist that they can see a fully three-dimensional apple in perfect detail and some can even rotate it in their mind. And then there's always a reply from somebody who says they can't visualize anything in their mind and did not know that that was an ability that other people had. This is a known phenomenon to science, but in terms of what percentage of people can do each one, we kind of don't know. It's highly subjective, and the only way to find out is to just ask people. Likewise, there are some people out there watching this right now who probably don't know that most people can voluntarily make a rumbling or roaring sound in their ear. Not everyone can do it. There's a muscle in your ear called the tensor tympani, and some people can voluntarily contract it and some can't. Also, most people can, on command, make their eyes go blurry. Others can't. Some people lose it as they get older. Again, it's because for some reason, some people can voluntarily contract the ocular muscles and others cannot. But I'll tell you right now, the truly great communicators and great teachers are the ones who understand intuitively that when they are talking to an audience, no two people are inhabiting the same brain or the same body. 
Because in reality, not only do people have these differences, but they are usually unaware of those differences. Oh my God, huh? That's interesting. <laughs> oh man, that is incredible. This is a good 